Hello and welcome to the Monroe Method Clancast. I am Jason Monroe. This is episode 101. We're now in the triple figures properly. So today we're going to talk about another thing that comes up a lot with my clients, something that I am I feel very repetitive about, something that I feel like I talk about multiple times on a daily basis is dietary fat. So I have probably covered this in a podcast episode already, but I just want to talk about it again from, you know, another perspective and a different time because my thoughts and feelings and facts that I share around this will, will change every time. I'm sure there's an episode somewhere about it. But let's talk about dietary fat. When you when you think of the media, when you think of the newspapers and the headlines and the things that have gotten a hard time over the years. So um, right now it's sugar, right? Everybody's fucking crazy about uh, blood sugar, blood sugar this, blood sugar that, insulin spikes. Ooh, remember the Zoe diet that nobody talks about anymore? This time last year, the Zoe diet was mega. It was everywhere. They were pushing the adverts hard. It was ridiculous. Then into January, they went even harder. And now, November, nobody cares. Nobody's interested. Very few people. It's, it's taken a massive downturn because that's just how these faddy, gimmicky things go. People are not, people are waking up to the fact that they don't want to pay £300 to have their shit tested to be told that they need to eat more fruits and vegetables, drink less alcohol, and drink less caffeine and stuff they already knew, basically. Um, so, yeah. It's it's been blood sugar. Blood sugar is the big hype. Glucose, insulin, that's all the big thing at the moment. But in the past, it's been other things. Fat has come up. And the thing is, when when something comes up in the media, when something's made mainstream and popular, um, people then pop up with their diet plans around it. And it's funny because you can see you can see how diets have been influenced by that over the years so like slimming world and weight watchers have gone through many different kind of evolutions there was a very low fat approach in slimming world at one point um and and other things over the years but for me the whole point of this episode is that someone asked me a question recently and says what do you think like the biggest issue is with people's diets and it's a very difficult question because there is no one thing um and I'm kind of torn between two answers. So I'm kind of 50-50 on both of these answers. But since this episode's about fat, we're going to make it about this one, right? So for me, the top two reasons that people struggle with their weight is that they do not eat anywhere near enough fruits and vegetables. Like I cannot stress enough that you listening to this right now, statistically, Oh, shit. What is it again? No, statistically, most adults in the UK, I don't know what the percentage is, but statistically, the average intake of fiber in the diet, now fiber comes from plants, it comes from fruit, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, etc. Um, statistically, most adults in the UK are eating half the minimum recommendation for fiber. And I... I see it worse than that from my side. Um, most So 30 to 50 grams a day is considered a healthy range of fiber in adults on a weight maintenance diet, meaning that you should be eating 30 to 50 grams of fiber a day. Now, I don't aim for that with my clients. I aim for a minimum of 20 grams a day. And my justification for that is that I don't have them on a weight maintenance diet. I have them on a fat loss diet or a fat loss on fat loss calories. So it's unrealistic to say to a person, right, I want you to eat 500 to 700 calories less than you need per day, but I still expect you to reach 30 to 50 grams a day of fiber, even though that's the recommendations for people on weight maintenance diets. So I set it to a minimum of 20 grams a day. And like I say, my justification for that is because I have them in a calorie deficit. The second thing is it's still high for most people the vast majority of people who come to work with me their fiber intake is between the average is between like five to ten grams now five to ten grams that could be someone having two slices of bread that could be someone having some pasta with their dinner like you can get five to ten grams of fiber without a single fruit or vegetable passing your lips um 
And that is a huge problem for a variety of reasons. Number one, I just look at that and think, how the fuck is this person still alive? They eat no fruits and vegetables. How are they going to the toilet? How are they getting vitamins and minerals? How can, you know, they must feel like crap every single day. No wonder they're stuck in a rut with their weight and struggling to do positive things. They already have an exceptionally unhealthy diet. So anyway, that's part one. But we're not talking about that today. It is interconnected and it's probably going to come back into the episode. The second thing, now you might think the other problem is high carb intakes, high sugar intakes. And I can honestly say hand on heart that I very rarely see people with high carb intakes. I very rarely see people with high sugar intakes. Now that's a bit of a kind of situation dependent thing. So you can't just have a high sugar intake. Um, maybe you can, but Okay, let me explain this. So someone's sugar intake could not be very high. However, if they're eating no fiber, then you could say they have a high sugar intake. Because the thing is, if someone's consuming, consuming an adequate amount of fiber, think of fiber as an, 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 uh, a sugar regulator. Without fiber in the diet, sugar just goes bananas. Big spike, big drop. Big peak, big drop. Big boost of energy, big crash of energy, feeling like you need more. When you bring fiber into the diet, it softens these peaks and crashes and it gives you a more wavy kind of gentle release of energy. So you think of think of fiber as a, a fuel regulator rather than you eat some sugar and it just throws all the energy at you at once. You use it for 10 minutes and then you feel like shit again. Fiber slows that down and it it helps you tap into the energy that you're consuming from calories much better. So yeah, like I said, with it, when it comes to people's weight, you might think the problem is that people eat too many sweets and it, it might potentially be part of it. But for me, the biggest contributor, and this is especially of true of people who are obese and beyond, who are, you know, carrying much higher levels of body weight, 15, 16, 17, 18 stones and beyond, you cannot get to that weight just by eating carbs or just by eating protein. You get to that weight by consuming massive amounts of calories on a daily basis. And it's very hard to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, just from carbs or just from protein. It comes from fat, dietary fat. Now, don't get these confused. Dietary fat has nothing to do with body fat. Dietary fat does not turn into body fat. Body fat's got nothing to do with dietary fat. People often get this confused when we talk about the keto diet this this idea that yeah when you just eat fat you burn fat yeah you do but you're burning the fat that you're eating you don't burn body fat that's not what it's about so it's important to separate those right your body fat has no relation to dietary fat um they're not the same thing they don't turn into one another or anything like that the reason that dietary fat is a problem is because of the calories involved right you get very little. I mean, part one is the calories. Part two is the food volume. So unlike carbs and protein, which contain four calories per gram, dietary fat contains nine calories per gram, more than double the calories. So per gram, more than double the calories of a, a gram of protein, gram of uh, carbohydrate. So if you eat 100 grams of protein, that's 400 calories. If you eat 100 grams of fat, that's 900 calories. So you can see how quickly and easily calories from fat accumulate. And, and, and this is a such a common trend that I see. And it's not just limited to people who have a lot of weight to lose. People who maybe have like a stone or something to lose, they have it as well. So the way that we do things inside the Monroe Method, we track, we look at NutriCheck, we look at my fitness pal, and we look at the nutritional summary pages every week. And I'll look at that and I can read these things like the matrix by this point. Uh, and you can do some kind of rough estimation. So a high fat diet would be considered when someone is getting 30% or more of their calories from fat. So if I sit down and do someone's check-in and I see that they are averaging 2,000 cal, let's say their calorie burns 2,500 and they're averaging 2,000 calories a day. Yes, they're in a calorie deficit. Brilliant, positive, they're going to lose a pound a week. However, when I then look at their balance of their diet, 
their protein might be low, their fiber will almost definitely be low, and their fat could be at 100 grams for the week as an average. So of the 2000 calories per day that person is consuming, 900 of them are coming from fat, almost 50% of the calories from fat. Now you might look at that and think, well, that's okay, because they're in a calorie deficit and their weight's coming down. And that's one way of looking at it. But the way that my mind works and the whole purpose of the Monroe method is to help people lose weight for life. Now, I know that the reason that person's weight is where it is, the reason they have three, four, five stones to lose is because they can very easily have a day where they consume a thousand plus calories from fat. How, how best to explain it? Like you, you do not reach a place in life where you have four, five, six stones to lose because you ate a few extra slices of bread or a couple of snacks or extra fruit or extra protein. You reach that because you consume a massive amount of calories. As in, when I say massive, I mean a level that, it, not not necessarily a number. If someone's burning 3,000 calories a day, they're eating 4,000 calories a day. If someone's burning 1,800 calories a day, they're eating two and a half thousand calories a day. It's you're eating way beyond your body's needs. You're putting in calories that your body doesn't use. It uses the first portion that it burns that day, but then it's got all these extra ones and it would get to them. But the next day you put in even more and then you put in even more. And what happens is you just end up in the cycle where your body's never using any of these stored calories. It's constantly running on food and all the extra that's left over just gets stored body fat body fat body fat and this comes from the continual consumption of of excessive calories excessive meaning more than you need when someone has the ability to eat 100 120 140 160 recently somebody joined the group 180 grams of fat in a single day purely down to their food choices because they're eating some nuts and they're eating some chocolate and they put mayonnaise on every plate and they eat a lot of cheese. They use a lot of butter. They use a lot of oils in cooking. Before you know it, this person has consumed a couple of thousand calories more than they needed. The other angle of this is, and this is something that I have to explain to people sometimes as well. And this is, as I say, this is a conversation I have on a daily basis with people. And, you know, I'll look when, when they come and do their kind of they're checking on day seven where we set up the kind of personalized nutrition. I'll take a look at two days of tracking and I'll, I'll just look for big things to jump out at me. So over the two days, their fibers at five grams. And I can say, look, you don't eat any fruits and vegetables at all. That's part of the reason why your weight is where it is. This is something that's going to have to change if you want to lose weight long term. Or their protein might be down at 30 or 40 grams for two days. Or their fat intake might be up at 80 or 90 grams for two days. And I have these conversations and say, okay, it's very, it's obvious to me based on, it's not always obvious. Some people will actually have pretty well balanced diets and it's other things to work on. But in the most, in most cases, I'll look at these two days of tracking and it will be very obvious like, okay, you have a very high fat diet. You're not eating enough fruit and vegetables. You've got nowhere near enough protein in your diet. And then you can say to that person, right, your pathway to success, not just losing weight, not just following calorie numbers, not just following instructions to make the scales come down. Part of the reason why your weight is where it is, is because you don't eat any fruits and vegetables. If you want to lose weight while we're working together, but then go on to maintain that, this is something that's going to have to change. And it's the same with dietary fat. If you are someone who can consume hundreds, potentially thousands of calories of fat in a day, that is something about you that has to change. You have become someone who has a naturally high fat diet because when you go to the supermarket, you pick up that and that and that and that and you bring them home and they're things that you eat on a daily basis. You're having sausages for your breakfast. You're having something at lunch with loads of mayonnaise and cheese. Then you're having macaroni cheese or pizza for dinner. And by the end of the day, that's 120 grams of fat over a thousand calories just from your fat intake in exchange for very little. That's the next part that I've not touched on. Go look at mayonnaise. If you have a jar of mayonnaise or a bottle of mayonnaise somewhere and it's the regular mayonnaise, go look at it. Go uh, Honestly, this mayonnaise is a thing that blows my mind 
because the calories involved are astronomical. Now, the, on, the only reason this was properly brought to my attention is because I order Gusto quite regularly and there will be recipes that require mayonnaise and they will send you it in a sachet and they often send you this 80 gram or is it 30 gram sachet it, it's it's not small like you would get ketchup in a, in a cafe or something but it's bigger than that and it's something like 600 calories in this just the sachet that fits in my hand and i just look at it thinking 600 calories my body could run on that for six hours that would fuel my body for six hours this tiny little thing in my hand um and it just comes down to the fat the sheer amount of fat in it uh so yeah if you have you know go look in the fridge at mayonnaise look at cheese look at chocolate look at butter and then look at the calories you know as a, a scraping of butter is whatever look at the fat involved so when you're looking at foods now just to to say this right now that it's not about trying to create a low fat diet you're not trying to get your dietary fat down to 10 and 20 grams a day listen fat is essential for your health especially in women it's crucial for female hormonal health however you only need so much 30 40 grams a day for most women sometimes 50 and 60 might be okay it just kind of depends on your calorie burn and the kind of ratio but 40 to 50 grams a day would be a good place for most people to aim but what i see from the majority of people i work with is 70 80 90 100 grams a day some of them consuming double the amount that they need and the thing is if if you reduce your fat intake by just you know let's say someone's having i just did a check in this morning someone was having nearly 80 grams a day and i said look if you reduce your fat intake by 30 grams a day that will give you almost 300 extra calories to, because she was complaining about hunger. And I said, well, the problem is you're giving 70 to 80 calories, 70 to 80 grams of fat per day. So you're giving a lot of calories to your fat intake. You don't get a lot of food for your calories when those foods are high fat foods. Think of it this way, right? Let's say that someone's fat loss calories are 1500. 1500 calories can be breakfast lunch dinner a mid-morning snack an afternoon snack and a dessert in front of the tv at night or it could be three slices of a domino's pizza so how much food you get for your calories is entirely dependent on how you balance those calories if you if you don't want to focus on protein, if you don't want to focus on fiber, if you want to have a high fat diet, then you can eat three slices of Domino's pizza every day, but that's all you can eat. And it'll come out at 1500 calories, maybe. Or do you want to learn how to balance your diet so you can have a filling breakfast, a filling lunch, a, a filling dinner that's a full plate of food, snacks in between, a supper at night, all for 1500 calories. So it's, I don't like the idea of a budget. I don't like the idea of calories as being something to spend, but it can be helpful to just look at it from that perspective, just to help you gain an understanding, right? Fat, high fat foods are expensive. That's that's a, a way to temporarily think of it, not all the time, because it's not an ideal way to think, but it just helps get the point across. Look at, you know, cut 30 grams of cheese off a block and look at it, hundreds of calories. You could eat that. And then go and eat your dinner like how many people grate cheese and eat it as they're going how many people slice cheese and eat a couple of bits as they go and then go and eat their dinner anyway you could eat a little bit of cheese and you know nobody would eat, eat 300 calories of cheese which isn't very much and then say oh i'm stuffed couldn't possibly eat my dinner now you don't because it's so easy to eat it's so easy to digest it doesn't fill you up so yeah for the vast majority of you listening to this, you are probably consuming too much fat in your diet. And it is, for me, it's the number one reason why people have weight to lose, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose, um, like I say, three, four, five stones plus. You're not, you didn't just get there because of bread. You didn't just get there because you're having a takeaway now and again. You didn't just get there because of a few snacks. You've got there because you have multiple excessive habits that lead you to consume high fat foods 
And remember, we all gain weight the same way. Everybody gains weight in the exact same way, but we get there in different ways. So the exact same way is the consumption of more calories than you need. In my 20s, when I was a 14 and a half stone version of myself, I was probably consuming 3000 plus calories a day on a daily basis. Now, throughout the whole of my 30s until now, my weight's much lower and my calorie burns somewhere between 23 to 25 per day. Now, I don't gain any weight. I don't lose any weight. I don't track calories. It just means that I've got the balance of my diet down to a point where it fits in with my my body. It doesn't contain a lot of high fat foods. It doesn't contain a lot of high fat snacks. The fattiest thing I might eat in a day would be alongside my dinner, maybe a takeaway at the weekend, but I'm not having, you know, sausages for breakfast every day. I'm not having, I don't know, high fat, whatever high fat meals would be every day for lunch and dinner. The last thing I wanted to touch on that I didn't mention, I, I kind of got towards it and didn't. So a lot of the time when when I'll have this conversation with people at their, at their check-in on day seven and say, look, you have quite a high fat diet and they'll come back and say, oh, but I eat a lot of avocado or I eat a lot of yogurt. And yes, you might well do eat avocado and yogurt, but I'll just kind of say, look, you've had 80 grams of fat on that day, 78 on that day. So we can maybe say that your average fat intake is 80 grams a day multiplied by seven, however many hundred grams that is per week. That's X amount of calories. That's the equivalent of 125 avocados, 45 liters or 45 kilograms of yogurt. And I, 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 I had this conversation with someone who said this. So she came back and she said, yes, well, I eat salmon and I eat avocado and I eat yogurt. And she was eating, she was one of these people that like 80, 90 grams a day. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the first 20 grams what about the rest you know it's it and, and I, I gave her just i don't do it to be mean it's not like that at all it's very much me trying to help people stop kidding themselves on oh yeah well the reason my fat it's all healthy fats because i eat avocado and i eat salmon and i eat this and it's like yeah so that's the first 20 grams if you eat those things every single day what about the other 60 grams i didn't say it like that i i said to her um well that, you know, you'd have to eat like 600 avocados in a week, uh, you know, 150 salmon fillets, blah, blah, blah. And she came back and said, well, okay, it's treats then. <laughs> and she was very blatant about it. She went, yeah, well, it's treats then. Basically, it was chocolate. If you use NutraCheck to track, there's a really good task that I give people to do. If you go to your nutrient or nutrition summary, I think it is in there, Go to your nutrition summary page, the one that shows you what your calories are. You can set it to one day, one week, one month, maybe, or one day, seven days, 30 days, whatever it is. Set it to the last week and down the bottom, you'll see all the individual things. So you can tap a button. I think you can tap. I don't know what order they're in, right? But basically you want to tap the one that says fat. Then you want to order by highest. And then you want to show the, the results and it is going to give you a top 20 food report. So you can look at that and say, right, over this week, the top 20 foods or ingredients or snacks or meals, like it will take everything from that week. It will analyze it and say, right, this week you had that thing, you know, you had a, a, a fish supper from the chip shop and it was 80 grams of fat. Um, but you've also had... 800 calories of mayonnaise, 900 calories of um, peanut butter, 1,000 calories of cheese, 1,200 calories of chocolate. And it will show you where all the high fat foods are coming from in your diet. Now, remember, it's not about removing these foods. It's looking at it and saying, okay, if the top, if the number one food on my thing for my fat intake is mayonnaise, then I am eating far too much fucking mayonnaise. So let's dial that back a bit. I will start to use less. I will start putting, I'll stop putting it on every single plate of dinner. Um, or I'll go get the lighter version or the lighter than light version. I'll give you a good example. So I, I never use full fat mayonnaise. Obviously, I've just told you why. Um, it's one of those things where you become, I know some people, if, especially if you're someone who eats a lot of it, you'll become accustomed to the taste and texture. And, it, you know, it's, it's important to you to have that version. But there are many occasions when you don't, need it and gusto is a great example so when gusto give you um 
the sachets to use. It's not because you're putting a dollop of it on your plate to dip stuff in. It's usually a part of a sauce. So like the, if I get something, it's got, it will come with mayo, but it will come with sriracha. And what they want you to do is combine the mayo with the sriracha to make sriracha mayo. When you add a taste to mayonnaise, it doesn't matter how thick it is because it's taken on something else. Now, if you're adding it to like a salad or coleslaw and then you're adding something else in like Korean the Korean chicken meal that I love from Gusto, they'll send you mayonnaise because you make like a slaw to go with it, but you add some of the sauce from the dish into the salad. So it doesn't matter if you use the lighter and light version or the regular version, it just tastes like the meal anyway. So there are lots of opportunities. And like I said, it's not going from having the thing all the time every day to never having it ever again. It's saying, how can I start to reduce my consumption of this thing because I'm having too much? How can I start to either reduce it or make some swaps what can i swap out what can i do differently and again just to round this off we are not trying to create a chronically low fat diet where every single food we eat is the low fat version and no we do not want to go stripping healthy fats from our diet you're not going to swap out an avocado so you can keep eating chocolate you're not going to swap out a salmon fillet so you can keep eating dominoes every weekend or whatever it is we don't want to remove the healthy fats. We want to look at um, the other stuff where our fats coming from. If avocado is high up on your list, maybe you're eating too many avocados. You know, if you're eating two avocados a day, that might be too too much. Remember, more isn't better all the time when it comes to, especially when it comes to healthy foods um, or what would be considered to be healthy foods. You can still eat too much healthy food and gain weight. You can still eat too much of a healthy diet and gain weight. Um, so yeah, it's about finding the balance. It's easy to go too far in either direction. Anyway, this was a long one today. Uh, I will see you next time. If I can find the stop button. <laughs>